Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a serious brain disease that is affecting five and a half million people in the United States today. Most are over the age of 60. Every 67 seconds, someone in the United States develops the disease. In fact, Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. One in three seniors die of Alzheimer's disease or dementia. Two thirds of those suffering with the disease are women and the disease affects blacks about twice as commonly as whites. The number of persons with Alzheimer's will grow as the population of those over the age of 65 rises. It is the only disease in America in the top 10 that cannot be prevented, cured, or slowed. In 2015, Alzheimer's disease and other dementia will cost the nation $226 billion, and by 2050, this may rise to $1.1 trillion. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia, a general term that describes a group of symptoms including loss of memory and other mental abilities. It accounts for about 60 to 80% of the dementia causes. Alzheimer's disease is an irreversible, progressive brain disease that slowly corrupts mental and thinking skills until eventually the affected person loses the capacity to complete or carry out the simplest task of daily living. In most cases, Alzheimer's clinical manifestations first appear after the age of 65. However, Alzheimer's and dementia are not a normal part of aging although the greatest risk factor of developing the disease is increased age. The term Alzheimer's was named for the German psychologist, Dr. Alios Alzheimer. In 1901, Dr. Alzheimer closely followed his client with an unusual mental disorder. Her manifestations included memory loss, language problems, and unpredictable behavior. After her death, Dr. Alzheimer took a serious examination of his client's brain and he found the presence of plaques, abnormal clusters of protein fragments built up between nerve cells, now known as amyloid plaques, and dead and dying nerve tangles, which are made up of twisted strands of another protein known as neurofibrillary tangles. Pathophysiology. Nerve cells or neurons do the real work in the brain. An adult brain contains about 100 billion nerve cells that connect to one another at the synapses. When a charge reaches a synapse, it will trigger a release of a tiny burst of chemicals called neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters will travel across the synapse, carrying the signals to other cells. These signals that travel through the neuron branches or forest form of neurons form a basis of memories, thoughts, and feelings. Unfortunately, neurons are the sheaf type of cells destroyed by Alzheimer's disease. Up to date, experts still do not know exactly what causes Alzheimer's disease and how the process begins. However, according to scientists, it appears to be likely that damage to the brain starts a decade or more before the issues become obvious, amid the preclinical phase of the Alzheimer's illness. Individuals are free of the Alzheimer's manifestations, but harmful changes are already occurring in the brain. Alzheimer's causes an abnormal structure called beta amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles to form. These are the classic biological hallmarks of the disease. Plaque forms when specific protein in the neuron cell's membrane are processed differently, releasing small fragments called beta amyloid. Beta amyloid is chemically sticky, so when these fragments clump together, they become toxic and interfere with the function of neurons. As more fragments are added, it increases the size and eventually forms beta amyloid plaques. Neurofibrillary tangles, on the other hand, are made when protein called tau is modified. In the normal brain cell, the cell's internal transport system is organized in orderly parallel strands, somewhat like railroad tracks. Fuel molecule cell parts and other key materials are carried up and down the tracks, which are called microtubules. A protein called tau helps the microtubules stay straight and stabilized. In Alzheimer's disease, abnormal tau separates from the microtubules, causing them to fall apart. Strands of this tau combine to form tangles inside the neuron, 
disabling the transport system, causing nutrients and other essential supplies to no longer move through the cells, destroying the cell. The once healthy neurons start to work less effectively. After some time, neurons lose the capacity to function and correspond with one another, and in the end, they die. After some time, the harm may spread to another closed structure in the brain known as the hippocampus, which is crucial in framing memories, thus causing memory loss. As these processes continue, the brain shrinks and significant brain functions are lost. Risk factors associated with Alzheimer's disease include age. This is the greatest known risk factor for developing Alzheimer's disease. However, as mentioned, Alzheimer's is not a normal part of aging. It is more likely to affect older individuals and in a greater proportion of those 85 years or old have it. Family history. Having Alzheimer's disease in the family is associated with higher risk. It is second biggest risk factor after age. Having certain genes, for instance, a polyprotein E or the APOE gene puts an individual at three to eight times more at risk than an individual without this gene. Being female, a great number more ladies than men are influenced with this disease. Signs and symptoms. As mentioned before, changes occur in the brain of those with Alzheimer's disease years before any signs of the disease are evident. This time period, which can keep on going for quite a long time, over years, is referred to as the preclinical Alzheimer's disease phase. Over time, the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease advance gradually in three general stages, mild, moderate, and severe stage. In the mild stage, which is the early stage, in this stage, the client can still function independently. However, there may be instances where the client and his significant others may notice some memory and concentration problems with the client, which may include difficulty coming up with the right word or name, problems remembering the name when introduced to new people, taking longer to perform a task in social or work settings, forgetting material that one has just read, losing or misplacing a valuable object, experiencing an increase in problems with planning and organizing. In the moderate stage, this is the middle stage. This stage is typically the longest, which can last for many, many years. In this stage, damage to the brain may include areas that control reasoning, language, sensory processing, and conscious thought. The client may require a greater level of care and symptoms may be obvious to others. The symptoms may include forgetfulness of events or about one's own personal history, feeling moody or withdrawn, especially in socially or mentally challenging situations, being unable to recall their own addresses, telephone numbers, or the high school or college from which they attended, confusion about where they are or what day it is, needing assistance in choosing proper clothing for whatever the occasion or reason, trouble controlling bladder and bowels in some individuals, changes in sleep patterns, such as sleeping during the day and becoming restless at night, thus increasing the wandering risk and becoming lost, personality and behavioral changes, including suspiciousness and delusions or compulsive and repetitive behavior like hand wrinkling or tissue shredding. Severe stage is the late and final stage of Alzheimer's disease. In this stage, the client's memory and cognitive skills continue to worsen. Near the end, the client may be in bed most or all of the time in this advanced stage as the body shuts down. In this advanced stage, the client may require full-time round-the-clock assistance with daily or personal care. They may lose awareness of recent experiences as well as their surroundings, require high level of assistance with daily activities and personal care. They may also experience changes in physical abilities, including the ability to walk, sit, and eventually swallow. Having increasing difficulty communicating, becoming vulnerable to infections, especially pneumonia. These three stages give you a general idea of how abilities change once manifestations appear and should only be used as guidelines since each Alzheimer client may manifest symptoms differently. So the rate at which the disease progresses from individual to individual depends on many factors. On average, a person with Alzheimer's lives about four to eight years after diagnosis. However, some have lived 20 years or more. 
Be aware that it may be hard to place a client with Alzheimer's in a particular stage, as stages may overlap. Diagnosis Alzheimer's disease is not simple to diagnose because there is no single test for it. Diagnosing Alzheimer's requires cautious therapeutic assessment, including a careful restorative history, mental status testing, and neurologic exam. A series of tests including blood work and brain imaging to preclude different reasons for dementia-like manifestations may also be done. Treatment Up to now, there is no cure for Alzheimer's disease. For that reason, current approaches for treating Alzheimer's disease are focused more on therapeutic interventions to help the client improve their quality of life, to include helping them maintain their mental function, manage behavioral symptoms, and slowing or delaying the symptoms of the disease as much as possible. Medications. There are four medications under the cholinesterase inhibitors class that can be prescribed to help temporarily improve some symptoms and slow down the progression of the disease. Drugs for Alzheimer's used in the US include Aricept, Remenil, Exelon, and Cognex. Nemenda is another type of drug known as an MMDA receptor agonist. It may also be used alone or in combination with a cholinesterase inhibitor and may be prescribed for mild stage Alzheimer's or for those who cannot take the others recommended for some reason, or for those with the late stage of Alzheimer's. Supportive measures. Besides medication, a wide range of supportive measures and treatments may help the client live as independently as possible. Psychological treatments such as cognition, stimulation, may be offered to improve memory, problem-solving skills, and language ability. Relaxation therapies may also be offered to help reduce depression, anxiety, agitation, and other challenging behaviors that often present with Alzheimer's disease. Practical tips for individuals with Alzheimer's might include keeping a diary and writing down things that are important, mounting a weekly timetable to the wall, putting keys in an obvious place such as a large bowl in the living room, putting labels on cupboards and drawers, keeping useful telephone numbers by the phone, having the patient write reminders and post-its in obvious places, setting an alarm clock to act as reminders, installing safety devices such as gas detectors and smoke alarms throughout the house. Similarly, as well as with different types of dementia and neurodegenerative disease, a real piece of the treatment for patients with Alzheimer's originates from the support given by caregivers to give the client quality of life care, which gets to be more critical as needs increase with declining independence. For clients nearing the end of life, the healthcare team should assess the needs, making the client comfortable and enable them to die with dignity in a place of their choosing. In summary, what's on the horizon for the science of Alzheimer's? There is increasing research going on to help those suffering with this deadly disease. Worldwide quest is underway to stop, slow, or even prevent Alzheimer's disease. An organization called the Alzheimer's Association funds research as they search for new strategies to look for a cure. All right guys, stay tuned. In the next video, we're going to go over nursing exam or NCLEX-style questions related to Alzheimer's. I'll see you in a bit.